Welcome to Marketing Today. I'm your host, Alan Hart, managing partner of Atomic, combining brand science and creative fire. Today on the show, I've got Richard Sakaridis from GLG. He's the head of public affairs and marketing. We talk about his career from partner at a law firm to White House to public affairs to now running marketing for GLG. One area we go deep on is content marketing with their new video series or series of video series that they've launched over the last few months um, and continue to roll out over the coming year. Richard talks about the lessons they've learned as well as the things that they're still trying to figure out like all of us. And we wrap up by talking about the future of marketing and why making sure you highlight why your brand exists to your consumers is going to be extremely important going forward. Well, Richard, welcome to the show. Thanks, Alan. I'm happy to be here. So I wanted to get started first out of the gate with GLG. What is GLG today? Um, I know it as another name, I guess the the full name, uh, historical name, Gerson Lerman Group. But uh, maybe you can update us on what GLG is today. Well, great. Thanks. Thanks. And thanks for having me on. Um, and, and for the opportunity to talk a little bit about our company and where we're headed and where we've been. And you're right. We were, we were, we're, we're about 17 or 18 years old now, and we were f- started as the Gerson Lehrman Group, or just Gerson Lehrman Group, really. Um, and the early focus of the company was, well, actually, the first thing the company did was provide independent research reports to investors on investing topics. So uh, if you were interested in, like, the telecommunications industry, Gerson Lehrman Group put out a booklet on trends in telecommunications. And uh, it's an interesting story for those who are interested in these kinds of things. But the company was not very successful in selling its research reports. But the few people who took a look at them said that the, that the independent research, the, the people you were speaking to to develop the research reports were actually pretty interesting and leaders in their field. And they said, why don't you just connect us to those people? So we invented the business of connecting business professionals to experts directly to solve problems. And, and as is often the case, the things about our original business that didn't work led us in a direction into a business that was very successful. And we first, we first worked with investors who were trying to figure out whether industries or, or even particular companies were a smart investment. As we did that, we kind of became GLG. Uh, everybody, that's how everybody knows us. And, uh, and in fact, some people use the expression kind of like when people say Google it. Some people in business use the expression, let's GLG it, um, <laughs> w- which was the way actually our, our domain name for our website, glg.it, was born because it's GLG it. Um, right. it's, we're, we're not an Italian company, which has led to some confusion in, in, in Europe. We do have some Italians who work here that we who we really enjoy, but, and, and we like a nice Italian Italian dinner with some Chianti. But but we are on the web. We're GLG it uh, because people say like Google it, GLG it. But anyway, um, as the business progressed. Um, we thought of ourselves, we thought of our primary mission as learning, and that's why we call, today we call ourselves a learning membership. But what we still do is connect uh, business people trying to solve problems with experts who can help them solve it. And that, uh, that usually happens, sometimes it happens over the phone in conversations that last uh, around an hour. Um, it can happen in day-long meetings and visits. It can also happen in uh, in in week-long or month-long site visits, um, and it can happen in um, you know in in more kind of strategic project ways. So there's a range of offerings. We also do some market research, some surveys. We have a meetings business where we do some uh, very bespoke roundtables with senior clients. But the core of our business is connecting professionals trying to solve strategic or operational problems with experts who can help them solve it. That's great. So now your background is quite varied. <laughs> um, I would love for you to you know, tell my listeners a little bit about you know, where did you get started and how did you end up at GLG? And among other functions that you manage, you manage marketing. 
Right. Well, I tell you, I I think of myself as very lucky because I've had a lot of very different, diverse kinds of jobs. But some people look at my resume and say, oh, this guy can't keep, can't keep a job. <laughs> but but um, I started out as a lawyer. And, uh, oh, no. I, oh, no. uh, yeah, and I practice, <laughs> I, I actually practice law. You know, some, law, some people go to law school and never practice law. I actually uh, practiced law and was a partner at a big law firm in New York for, uh, for quite a few years. And I practiced law for a decade, uh, before going into politics. Politics had always been my passion. It was uh, the original reason why I went to law school. But, um, I got an opportunity in the early nineties to work for Bill Clinton when he was running for president the first time. And then when he was elected president, I moved to Washington and joined the White House staff working on uh, domestic policy issues, civil rights, criminal justice, uh, education, LGBT rights. Um, and I did that for the second decade of my career. And then um, when, uh, when, when the Clinton presidency ended, rather than going back to practice law, I went into uh, media communications marketing and I worked for Time Warner and some of the Time Warner companies. Um, including New Line Cinema, when it ha when it was in its heyday, when uh, it won all those Oscars for the Lord of the Rings series. So I got to work on a winning president. I, I I got to be partner in a law firm. I got to work on a winning presidential campaign, and I got to work on a winning Oscar campaign. Um, and I, I I did that. Those those were those were essentially the first thirty years of the first three decades of my career. And then um, when New Line got folded into Warner Brothers, and I left the movie business. Uh, I did some writing. I was doing some consulting. I was doing some commentating on TV. I started writing, and uh, I I wrote uh, for the New Yorker. Still do write for the New Yorker, although less about uh, the intersection of law and politics, and social justice, uh, with a focus on gay rights. And um, I, so that's kind of what I was doing when uh, GLG, the the folks at GLG. Uh, found me and headhunted me, and they were looking for a new director of uh, communications. The interesting part of this is I, I joined the company to be head of media, communications, and government affairs. And then when our head of marketing left, I, uh, I maneuvered my way into being acting head of marketing because even though I didn't have a marketing background, I thought, you know, because I knew the company... I had some expertise that would uh, would be well suited for it, and and really what I did was look for people who to hire in our marketing department, who I thought really understood B two B marketing, who understood marketing in the learning space, who understood digital marketing, and I put together a great team, and it, w it was an interesting experience because I kind of learned from the team of people who I hired to work for me how to be a marketer. I love that. I love that. And, you know, you think about your background. I mean, you have had already, I guess, three careers now, essentially. How do you think that prepared you for this role, either leading the teams or, or um, just doing the day to day? Yeah, well, I think it's interesting. I mean, certainly um, the jobs I had in media and entertainment were c communications. And I learned a lot about marketing. You know, marketing in the movie business is about the toughest kind of marketing job you can have. And even though even though I wasn't in charge of that, you know, the, the person I reported to was the president of New Line Marketing. And, and so I learned a lot from watching him. And, you know, in the movie business, they launch you know, at New Line, we launched a new movie every month, and it's like launching a new product, but, right. but then trying to do it every month. The, the, the marketing, the marketers in the movie business, it's one of the toughest marketing jobs in the world, you know, and they, they, you know what they say in the movie business is that if the movie does not do well, it's the fault of the marketing department. If the movie is a <laughs> if the movie is a success, they've had a brilliant director. Um, so, so they they get they get uh, marketers in the marketing and communications people in the movie business get the short end of the stick, no matter what. But so I certainly learned a lot about communications and marketing there. And then also in politics, you know, politics is essentially uh, in a lot of ways marketing. And I think. Um, over the last uh, over the last fifty years, it's become much like that. I mean, I think it was probably fifty years ago. It was probably uh, more about policy and, cajole and cajoling and background deals. But um, uh, you know, more recently, and certainly in the era of Trump, 
it's really become, uh, you know, if you're if you're a successful marketer, like whether you like him or not, you have to admire Donald Trump as a marketer of his brand and of his ideas. And, um, and you know, so I learned a lot about that in politics. Um, I also think that for a company like ours, which is so focused on um, compliance and on, you know, we have, we're a very values-driven company. You know, our, our main values are learning and curiosity, but right up there is responsibility and, uh, and compliance. And so we pride ourselves in being the leaders in compliance in a very compliant, sensitive industry. And uh, we've developed programs that are, uh, we think, superior and really set the gold standard in the industry. And so I think my background as a lawyer was attractive to the company because I brought an understanding of that you know, and, and how that intersects with how you market that. Right, right. Well, I, I haven't met many marketers. There are some, though, that are, have been lawyers before. So Turns it, out it's pretty good preparation. It, it probably really is, if you think hard about it. Not to mention, if you are a marketer with a law degree, you're your own worst enemy, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it you could it kind of makes for like kind of like a, a bipolar experience. Like. <laughs> right. Exactly. 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 Well one of the things that, that sparked Maybe me, that explains my mood swings. Uh, it it could. It could. It, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, one of the things that, that sparked me to have this conversation with you is the content marketing that you're doing and specifically a video series uh, or a series of video series, which we can talk about in a minute. But thinking about your business model of connecting folks to experts and fostering learning, I thought it was really interesting that essentially you started putting those experts out front as your marketing and making it available for free. A lot of people I think would gate that, right? Yeah. Um, and, and, and not do that. So I'm curious why, what, what sparked that and, and why did you, why'd you decide to, to make it free and open? Well, well, first of all, thanks for noticing because that is a big compliment coming, you know, from someone who, who watches for this and studies it. But, you know, I think that one of our communications challenges as a B2B company focused on learning um, was that most of the work we do with clients is confidential, right? If a client comes to us, I mean, all of the work we do with clients is, is confidential. So if a, if, a, if, a, if a client comes to us with a, with a strategic or operational issue they're trying to solve, they certainly don't want the competition to know um, what that issue is or really have any hint of even what area it's in because it's like it, it could give up a, a you know a, a secret new strategic direction or any kind of operational issue that the that the client is experiencing so we can't ever talk to outsiders or we can't talk to potential new customers about the kinds of things we're involved in because it because it's you know it's not part of what we do nor should it be um, so we were looking for a way, though, of showing rather than telling potential new clients what it is exactly we do. So we had this idea, and I actually don't take credit for it. It was our CEO's idea, Alexander Saint Amand, who's who's been with the business, uh, you know, almost since he you know, since he was in his young twenties, and is now our 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 uh, president and CEO. He had the idea when we do these meetings and have our experts, some of our experts, come in and talk to clients. He said, um, you know, why, why, don't, why don't we record them on our iPhones and make little, little iPhone videos and put them up on our website, and then people will know the kinds of people they can speak to. Now, it was a good idea up to a point, right? The iPhone, the iPhone does make a beautiful video, <laughs> right. but uh, the, the idea of making videos was with them was fantastic. We, we, they're obviously not iPhone videos. It was a way really to, rather than try to explain what we do, it was a way to show people what we do. And so we started out by doing it with uh, some of our experts and then some of our clients. You know, it's very, 
difficult to get a client to talk about, you know, people who are in business-to-business consulting or business-to-business other B2B businesses. No, it's very, it's sometimes very difficult to get a client to talk about you and their experience with you, not really because they don't want to help, don't want to be helpful, but because they, uh, you know, they've got their own businesses to run and they've got the legal departments and communications departments that don't really want, want them to do it. But we were so impressed with the learning that some of our clients were doing uh, that we went to them and they said, we don't really want you to talk about using GLG. We want you to talk more about, you know, how you learn as a professional. After we created our expert series, we created this series called Leading Learners, which is essentially clients of ours talking about how they view the learning experience as top professionals. And I would recommend it to everybody. We're super proud of it. We have an amazing cross-section of, of leading learners in it. And and as you say, all these videos are free at glg.it slash video. And um, so the one thing I would say that also is an interesting point, I think maybe to some of your listeners on how we did it, is um, – you know, everybody wants in the video business, right? Video is, is seen because now right. there's so much video on phones and everything. People really see video as the future of marketing. We, rather than outsource this, you know, we were a little, we were maybe made a counterintuitive decision, but rather than outsource this, uh, we decided to build up a video capacity in-house. So we built an in-house video studio in our office in Midtown Manhattan. Um, we hired some video production people full-time. We bought some cameras, we bought some lighting, we bought some equipment, and we cr- created the ability to, to produce video in-house. Now, it perhaps required a little bit more of an investment early on, but I think ultimately we saved money. And uh, you know, one, I would say that one of the reasons we were able to do that is um, you know, the company is generally experiencing a big growth spurt. And uh, you know, we've had we, we've been around now, as I said, 17 years. So we were kind of kind of took off like a rocket ship. And when the uh, stock market kind of hit some bumps in around 2008, we kind of flattened out. But as um, I would say, over the course of the last three or four years. The company is expanding very quickly. You know, it hasn't quite doubled in size in the four years I've been here, but it's it's close to that. And uh, we're the leader in the in the. You know, we don't really think we have any real competitors, but we have uh, some people who do some of the things we do. But we're we're way bigger and more global than any of them. Well, you mentioned a bunch of the the mini series. Um, there's the you know business in a Trump era, the leading learners, like you mentioned, um, and then the, one of my favorites is the anatomy of a decision. Curious, how do you pick these topics to focus on? Well, it's interesting, right? So, so because we're focused on learning, and we're focused on learning for top professionals, and we're focused on on people who are having to make decisions, we thought that we would we would try interviewing uh, some of our experts and some of the some of the people who are part of our GLG membership um, about how they make decisions or about particular decisions, and. Um, you know what we, we this is a new series that we launched just about 10 days ago and we're rolling out more videos in the series next week the first three videos we did are with Jake Sullivan who was a policy director at the state department and a policy director on the Hillary Clinton campaign and Jill Abramson who is the former editor of uh, the New York Times and uh, Jeff Bronzel who was the former dean of admissions at Yale And we just picked people who we thought were making interesting decisions. So there we've got the decision to admit or not admit a candidate at an undergraduate school. We thought that was a really interesting decision. Jill Aberson talked about the decision to publish or not an article with national security implications. And Jake Sullivan talked about the delicate issues in diplomacy and and how to decide whether or not to go forward with, with a treaty or with a negotiation with a foreign power when obviously you were getting some of what you wanted, but not everything. So there, these are like, you know, highly high stakes decisions, super high stakes decisions, where obviously, um, you know, you have to balance a lot of factors and where you can't be right 100% of the time, but getting it as close to right 100% of the time you know, is very important and has a lot of consequences. So we thought, you know, we just thought these were interesting people. We've got we've got a bunch of these filmed um, that are coming up, and I would, if people are interested, I would like, you know, watch our watch our space. 
Well, I, I think it's kind of a brilliant marketing move, to be honest, to put GLG at the center of a, of a conversation about how decisions are made, right? That's the business you're in is helping to make more confident decisions or, or learn um, yeah, to, and to I guess when you when you when you you I didn't I didn't answer your question, which I thought was interesting about like why did we decide to make these free? You know, we really th we we really think that at this point our work in this area, you know, you, you do learn things by we are we're in the learning business, and you do learn things by watching these videos. But you know, our, the core of our business are these one-on-one -on -one interactions that are highly interactive, that are on demand that the client can take in any particular direction he or she wants, you know, obviously subject to a, a lot of guardrails for compliance and, and, uh, and, and, and making sure that, you know, confidentiality is respected and so forth. But at the core of our business are these one-to-one -one interactions that are driven by what the client is interested in. So um, these are more illustrative of the uh, work you can do, and that's why we decided to make them free. You know, we may decide. We may decide later to charge for them. <laughs> I, I reserve the right to do that. <laughs> but right now, we're excited for what we're, for just making them available to everybody. Well, I'm going to start watching them all just in case. In case you change your mind. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, um, I, so we talk. You know, video is one component in creating this content. Um, you know, what does your other marketing efforts look like today? Well, you know, for a company like ours uh, that's involved in B two B micro consulting or B two B learning at a very high level, our website is super important to us. So we've invested a, a, a lot of time and money and and you know terrific work of many professionals in house to we think develop a beautiful website that is both both beautiful and appealing. And, but yet highly functional and delivers a lot of information both to existing clients, prospective clients, and very importantly for us because we're hiring you know, so quickly as we expand, uh, the, the website is a big marketing uh, tool for, for new hires. So it has to serve all those purposes and we think we're really proud of the result, but we've, in, we've, we've invested heavily there. We do... You know, we do uh, use LinkedIn, we use Twitter, we use Facebook, we even use Instagram. I was a big proponent of using Instagram. Some of my some of my team members thought we're a little slow to the Instagram game. I don't know why, but we're on Instagram now for GLG Careers, and uh, we think it's really working for us. We really like it. I think it's a beautiful brand. I think that, you know, the, the Instagram folks are doing a great job. I, I'm on Instagram a lot. I, I'm, I'm a little reluctant to say how much time I spend on Instagram every day. Oh, come uh, on, go on the record. Go on the no, record. Yeah, no, no, yeah. I'm not going to do it. But it's probably more time than I should. But that's, I really think it's addictive. I, it's, it's one of my favorite brands. Right, right. That's, that's and I funny. think it rewards, I think it rewards people who are invested in it, you know, in, in, in beautiful pictures and people use it in all kinds of different ways. So we're using it too. I'm curious. I know it's still probably relatively early, but you know, have you seen an impact from these efforts so far to date? Yeah, it, you're right. It is still pretty early, but we've seen a lot of anecdotally. We've seen greater awareness. I mean, we're getting. You know, we're 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 uh, you know, as the as the video program has rolled out, we're getting a lot of views. I don't want to go into exactly how many views we're getting, what we're comparing them to, but we're very pleased with the, with the views we're getting. We're very pleased with, with, with the sectors they're coming from. We've heard anecdotally that it's uh, driving client acquisition wins, and you know we're really happy with it. We're going to keep doing it. So I'm curious too as well, you know, for the listeners out there, they're trying to do similar types of content marketing efforts or marketing in general around services. You know, what, what lessons have you learned or, or maybe even what, what are you still trying to wrestle with? Well, I think, I think the key always is like, uh, you know, some of the issues we talked about, like, like how do you, what kind of content to provide? How do you figure out what people might be interested in? What's really going to pop? I think some of that is, is lucky, you know, when you're doing videos with people who, uh, you know, you don't know exactly what they're going to say, what actually pops, what breaks through. You know, sometimes you just have to dive into it and, and, and hope you get lucky. And I think we've done that on a couple things. I think we've got some stuff 
that is coming up where uh, we're you know we're very optimistic about uh we, you know we would like to be able to you know we're always trying to better quantify what works and how it works and i think for anybody in this uh in this field, you know, they're familiar with that challenge. You know, you think something's working and you hear anecdotally that it's working, but the struggle is to really quantify it and to and to fine tune it so that you can repeat it. And we're, you know, we're still working on ways to do that. So, you know, I would say that if you too are, are, are struggling with those issues, you know, I think everybody is. Right. No, I agree. I agree. Especially but in the I, but content. I, yeah, but I, I would say that, um, you know, I, I say that what, what we're convinced, though, is if people are watching these and we're getting good, good feedback from them, from clients and potential clients, and, and we've got, uh, you know, uh, some, some identifiable new client wins around them, and if you like the way your brand is reflected in the material, you can't go wrong. Great. And so stepping back from GLG and, and the current data job, I love to get kind of under the hood with the folks that come on the show and really understand, you know, you and, and what what drives you, what what um you know, what fuels your your passions or your success. Well that's a I mean that's an inter- <laughs> that's it's a very interesting question. Um I would say that uh uh you know, I think I like a lot of people in this field i am um you know very competitive i think to be a good communicator good marketer you know feeling competitive is uh is important um i love the glg brand so the fact that i get to work every day at a company and for a company whose brand i'm really excited about is you know a gift i mean when i worked in government and and got to work for for bill and hillary clinton you know i'm a huge fan of theirs and what what they've both tried to do and what they've stood for so every day i worked for them you know i thought to myself like I, you know i, I kind of can't believe they're paying me to do this i often feel that way here at glg because i think it's i think what we're trying to do is um is such an amazing uh, product for uh, senior professionals and business people, and you know we're 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 helping businesses um, make money and become more profitable and connect with clients. But we really think at the core of what we do is learning. That if you're a senior professional today, you know that you know the era of lifelong learning is really upon us. That what you what you knew you know last year or two years or th- three years ago about doing your job is is obsolete. And that the only way to stay ahead of things, the only way to stay innovative, the only way to continue to deliver for your customers and your, your fellow workers and your shareholders is to, is to continue to stay innovative. And the way you stay innovative is to continue to learn. And so to be in that business is very exciting and, and really drives me. And we have, a, we have an amazing culture. So I think working in a company that, that has a culture that I, that I really relate to and that I think people are happy working in is also really important. We, even though we're, you know, uh, 17 years old, it is it it feels like a startup. We're kind of a, we're, I would say we're like a mature startup. So that's exciting to me also. And you know, I have I have a lot of interests. You know, I mean, marketing and communications for sure. But I'm still, uh, you know, super interested in human rights, gay rights, education, uh, stuff that, that fueled me when I was in the public sector. And, uh, you know, we, we, here at GLG, we have a, um, you know, we have a culture that allows people to continue to pursue that. So um, that's really, you know, been a big part of this for me. Well, and I know you mentioned, you just mentioned, obviously, human rights and gay rights, but also before Instagram as a brand that you that you like, um, you know, are there, uh, is there any more you want to expand on any either of those brands or, or companies or causes you like? Yeah, I mean, listen, I, I, th- I think I already, I already did my Instagram commercial, right? I, I, I don't even have stock in that company. <laughs> but there, you know... Um, I like, you know, in the learning space, I really like the TED brand, brand TED conferences. Um, I think that they uh, do um, 
first of all, I think the TED conferences and, and the fact that they're available um, for free, uh, the TED Talks uh, on, the, on the TED website, I think they do an amazing public service. They're super interesting. I like the way they're curated. Um, Chris Anderson, who's the head of TED, has pursued a very um, unconventional marketing strategy. You know, his idea was that if you, you know, that the brand will succeed if, you know, the more air you give the brand and the more you make it available free to people, um, the, the, the bigger it will become. Now, obviously, it's very expensive to go actually go to the main TED conference and, and TED has its corporate sponsors, including GLG, because we like the brand so much. Uh, but we're, we're a proud uh, TED partner, and I think they've done an amazing job with their brand. And they've done it in very kind of unconventional ways. You know, anybody can, if you meet certain criteria, you can set up a TEDx conference uh, just, by, just because you want to. Um, I like the Airbnb brand right now quite a bit because I think it has a nice feel to it and uh, it has a social conscience it uh, it 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 is it is you know kind of about belonging um, I like the adidas brand I think their their stuff is very clean very fun um, I think that uh, it um, their stuff just looks great I know Nike 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 does some great stuff too I really like the Adidas brand. Um, I was just, I'm kind of just thinking and rolling these off as I think of them. There's a small there's a small company there's a small European company which is a which is a uh, food and beverage company called Joe and the Juice. Do you know it? I don't. No. Yeah, they're they're just kind of coming into the U.S. market, but they um, they have little stores with um, with like little takeout sandwiches and juices. It's called Joe and the Juice. They they've just got they they're they're I think they're Swedish, uh, but they're uh, they're they're big now throughout Europe. You see them in the air, in the airports throughout Europe. They're just coming to the U.S., but they're a really fun, clean brand, extremely well marketed. They have an amazing product. I really like Joe and the Juice. Okay, and and a great name. Yeah. No. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, so last question. You know, what do you see for the future of marketing? What do you, where do you think it's going? Well, that's a great question. Uh, also, uh, also a big, a big idea. I think that, um, you know, broadly speaking, I think that companies uh, that uh, uh, companies need to show. Um, Consumers, whether they're business consumers or or actual consumers, uh, you know, or 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 B two C companies, um, the reason their company exists. And I mean, I don't always, I don't think it always has to be like a big, you know, social purpose reason. But I think that um, um, I think that the as marketers, we have to always think about why does this company exist. And is it pursuing that mission in a responsible, in in a responsible way, in a way that is respectful of other people, respectful of the planet? I think that you know that is that is what we need to ask ourselves every day. Um, you know, we have this big learning mission. We do a lot of work in the social impact space. We invest a lot in working with social entrepreneurs for free as part of the GLG social impact program. That's a big part of our external marketing because we want people who, who work with us to know that um, we, we think what we do and the service we deliver is fantastic for our clients and their businesses and we'll, we'll make the money. But we also care about the world around us and we care deeply about doing our business in a responsible way and in a way that will make the world a better place. And I think if, if marketers can do that for their brand, no matter what the brand is, they will have succeeded. Very well said. Very well said. I agree 100%. So thank you so much for coming on the show today. It's really been fun to talk to you, Alan.